Hey everyone, welcome to Locked on Lakers for Monday. Brian Kamenetsky and Andy Kamenetsky. The Lakers get a second straight win, 106-94 Sunday night at Staples Center over the Orlando Magic. And once again, LeBron James was front and center. Andy, it looks like he might be doing the thing where he takes a team, puts it on his back, and tries to get it where it wants to go. Let's talk about whether or not they can get there next on Locked on Lakers. You are Locked On Lakers, your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everybody for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday. We get this thing up bright and early for you, so no matter where you are. Uh, It can be the first thing you listen to, even if you're working the overnight shift, Andy. It's there for you, ready to go Monday through Friday. I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com and use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. So, um, THT, strong game Sunday night, Andy. Frank Vogel talked a little bit about what he likes seeing from me in the starting lineup. Um, no Anthony Davis um, for the second straight game for the Lakers. Something else to talk about. Uh, we'll try to get to some interesting straw poll numbers about the MVP that give you an idea of where things have gone for the Lakers this season. But let's start with LeBron because, man alive, Andy, Sunday night, as it was Friday night, LeBron was strong for the Lakers, and I think it was not on accident. Yeah, it was not on accident. He's very clearly looking to set a tone, energy and focus and purpose wise that this team is needed. And and LeBron, to his credit, called himself out. I want to say after the loss to the Clippers, it was after the Um, loss to the Clippers. He called himself out defensively. Right. But, you know, defensively is a big part of the issues plaguing this team. And, And specifically, I think, you know, you look to you look to your best players often to set that type of tone, assuming that they're best players that are capable of playing defense, which Mm -hmm. LeBron is, and it starts becoming really hard to hold other guys accountable to do that when, A, you're not doing it yourself as LeBron, and B, some of these guys just don't have the defensive upside that LeBron has even in his 19th season. Like, LeBron fully engaged is going to be better than Malik Monk defensively fully engaged. I don't care what Monk does busting his ass. It just isn't going to be the same. Right. So, you know, LeBron has really, I think, taken, you know, he's taken it upon himself to make sure that everybody is following his lead, you know, especially at this time without Anthony Davis. And the results have been really good. Yeah. 30 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists for LeBron, had three really uh were all three chase down blocks i know he had three blocks on sunday were they all chase well downs? okay I know two of them were well th- okay there was one that i don't know if this technically counts as a chase down block but it was an incredibly cool moment that in a lot of ways exemplified all the individual moments in the game where lebron was giving him a lift it was during the third quarter where after i think it was actually lebron missed um baseline jumper The Magic got the rebound, and they were running, and it was Cole Anthony running the break, and LeBron was trailing him, and Stu Lance, as he's calling the game, is saying- Yeah, that was a chase down. Yeah, well, well, okay. Uh, LeBron's tracking him. He's tracking him, and right as Cole Anthony put up this floater, LeBron swooped in to block it, Um, and like that was just one of those energy moments Mm -hmm. that the Lakers really needed you know, a lot throughout this game, you know, in, in terms of just making sure that the lead that they built up, which at one point was, you know, 20 something didn't go away. Right. Because they, they, they let off a little bit in the fourth quarter, got that, but in more of a much more normal, this happens a lot. There is no normal with this team. Period. When they lose a lead, until I see evidence of them knowing how to control games, it is problematic. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have any any reason to be concerned that you should give them the benefit of the doubt. All I'm saying is the what happened on Sunday, where the lead got down, I think, as low as 10. I don't uh, think Orlando got it into single digits. I think it got to 10. 10 or 9. Was... Not unusual by NBA standards where you build up a big lead and it goes and it sure. starts to 
That's all about. That's not good. No, and no. It is a I, missed opportunity to get LeBron James off the floor and sitting down and all that stuff, so that your guy who is thirty six years old and put his, you know put, putting the team on his back for a few games because this was a big topic of conversation after the game. Might, we might as well talk about this as long as we're on it. Like Dave McMenamin, uh, a, a couple other people, Kyle Goon at the uh, you know uh, L.A. Uh, Los Angeles. What do they call it? Newspaper group. Um, Something like that. It's the Daily News. It's the Register. It's I mean, all. It's, those it's like fifteen different papers. Right. Just, it's a just, lot. It's just, Kyle Goon. Yeah. Go, um, you, I'm sure you're following him on Twitter. He's really good. Andre Drummond is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're, they're buddies. You you reach like this. The, the, one of the questions asked of LeBron. One of the questions asked of Vogel is like, it's it's awesome to watch LeBron do this, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, is it a good thing? that LeBron needs to like, how do you keep that up? And like, is there a limit to how many times you can kind of go to that over the course of a season? And of course, you know, LeBron was like, I'm just doing what I do for 19 seasons and kind of ignored the question. I'm not <laughs> totally sure he heard well, it. That, well, by the did. way, that actually in some ways answers the question, even if he's not trying to answer right. the question or it answers the crux of the question. You know, I've been doing this for 19 seasons. It would be much more reassuring right. if he said, I've been doing this for nine seasons. I'm just doing this, what I've been doing for the last, you know, four seasons in the NBA. But like, you know, so, you know, Frank Vogel obviously doesn't say, you know, I think we've got four more of these games left, but you know, you know, this is LeBron. He's capable of doing all this stuff, but you know, it, it is the, it is the most important question. Cause you know, THT was asked about LeBron going at like performing like this on both sides of the ball in his 19th season. And it was, you know, to your point you were making earlier, Andy, it was like, you know, how can I, as a third year guy, 20, just turned 21, how do I not go bust my ass? You know, when LeBron's doing this, um, it's inspiring in that way, but it's not just that it's inspiring. It's that they need him to do it because they're otherwise they're not good enough defensively. Cause like you say, Malik Monk, doesn't matter how hard he tries, isn't good enough to sort of effort his way into a strength. They need LeBron. And he's not alone. I mean, it's not no, just no, no, Malik no. Monk. Not, we're, not picking on, we're not trying to pick on Malik. It's like for, for them to get to the baseline of what they need to do, 36 to 10 in the third quarter against Orlando um, on, on Sunday night. At one point, Orlando went a hair under 10 minutes without scoring. Which is sort of unheard of in the NBA. Like they that that has to be in part driven by LeBron, not just inspiring, but also being excellent as a defender. Yeah, there there were several different parts in this game where the Lakers needed lifts because things were either starting to go a bit sideways or they were behind in the game, needed to get back in, or just control needed to be regained. And there was one section in the second quarter where LeBron found Austin Reeves with this just incredible behind the back pass from the top of the key to Reeves as he was cutting. Reeves got fouled, made both free throws. The next trip down, Orlando missed. LeBron led the break, hit uh, THT for a layup. They retook the lead 32 to 31. In the third quarter, which the Lakers opened down three, LeBron opened it with back to back threes, same exact spot at the top of the left arc, one off a screen from Dwight, and uh, another one where he just had enough space and Mo Bamba was afraid to challenge. He ended up just cutting, uh, finding THT cutting, setting him up for an and one. He had like 11 points in the first three-ish minutes of the third quarter, and it was the primary fuel for this 17-0 run that took a deficit and turned it into a 16-point lead. Then in the fourth quarter, when things were getting a little, little bit shaky, LeBron got a block on one end, and then he ended up backing down, backing down, backing down his defender, then fed Dwight at the rim right when the help came. Just these, all these different moments in the game that the Lakers needed something specific just to make sure the game was secure. It was always LeBron spearheading it. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's talk about this because there are, there's some things coming up where you actually feel like maybe the Lakers are catching a bit of a break, but at the same time, they're also playing without Anthony Davis. They didn't have him again on on Sunday. So there's a lot, as has been typical for the Lakers this season, Andy. There's a lot going on at once. We'll talk about it next. 
Locked on Lakers brought to you by DirecTV Stream. So here's the scenario. You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another one that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your best friend's sister's boyfriend's brother's girlfriend who heard from this guy who knows this kid who's going out with a girl who saw Ferris pass out at 31 Flavors last night, her login for the good stuff. And there's a simpler way to get all that entertainment that you love without the hassle, a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called DirecTV Stream, and it brings live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. No more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again. The best part, there's no annual contract. Actually, we just got direct TV stream. It's fantastic. We're really enjoying it. So Get rid of all the clutter, the confusion. Get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. A compatible device required. Content varies by package. What do you think is the answer, Andy, to the question about whether or not you can ask LeBron to do this? Let's let's assume AD is is back reasonably soon. There was a little bit of a uh, Pictures taken, so to speak, a look inside the knee and no structural damage. So I, I don't think this is anything particularly concerning. It's just a matter of other than it's Anthony Davis and right. everything is always slightly sure. concerning with him. But so I mean, like, but I, I don't think that this is something, at least from what they are saying, and this was talked about uh, before the game, that they are worried about right now. It's not Kendrick Nunn territory. No. Uh, quite yet. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. <laughs> so, you know, let's, assuming he comes back and it's it's relatively soon, you, know, you don't need to rush him. If he's back, you know, for Wednesday's game against uh, Dallas, great. Um, if it, it takes a little longer, that's okay. But, you know, that aside, it seems like this is like the first stretch where the Lakers have actually caught a couple breaks. Where you know they have a chance to, uh, you know, LeBron looks like he's going to be out for ten days with the COVID protocols. He's gone for one; it's a false positive. Um, they catch Dallas this week with no Luca. He's not going to play in that game. Um, they catch the Bulls with what, like nine guys in the COVID yes. protocols right now. Yeah, it's I mean, like, who knows who's going to be available for that game? Next as of week. Sunday, I think it literally was nine yes, guys. It, w- it was. I mean, that's uh, that is insane. Yeah, that is that is nuts. And so, you know, and hopefully all of those guys are okay, and presumably most of them will be. And it's fine. Like, and guys get back into the lineup quicker now than they did last year because the rules are changing. I think rightly so. But either way, Chicago is not going to have everyone presumably uh, available and ready to go by Thursday. Correct? That game is Thursday in Chicago. Um, schedule is very confusing to me. Chicago is Sunday. Oh, Chicago's the third game, right? Minnesota. So is it, maybe by then they have everybody back, but maybe not. Like just you know, so Chicago is is, is Minnesota's Friday, right? And Minnesota, after a very very strong run, um, lost a couple in a row. They won Sunday, but you know, you never know what's going to happen with them. You know, let's assume AD comes back. They have a chance to to build a little bit and whatever. But if building is necessitated by LeBron having to do kind of what he's been doing over the last couple games. It is reasonable to ask whether or not that's a sustainable formula, whether guys are going to say yes or no. Um, you wouldn't expect him to say, yeah, we can't keep it up, but like it, it's not an unreasonable question. Well, I mean, you don't want, you don't want it to be a, f- a formula that you even have to try to sustain. I mean, whether or not LeBron can technically do this or in reality can do this, do you really want the Lakers to have to prove it? I mean, that that's not ideal. I mean, especially with all the reconfigurations that they did specifically you know, with bringing in Russell Westbrook that was supposed to be in part making LeBron's life easier in certain ways. I, I do think, as we talked about on a recent show, the idea that somehow LeBron's life was going to get easy enough that he doesn't have to perform like an elite superstar was a fallacy. And I, I think in some ways people had been, not necessarily you, but just... No, but I'm not even sure that was the premise. The idea that he wouldn't have to perform like an elite superstar, but that he wouldn't have to... Life is always going to be every hard when minute you're... of every, like Because they've been so bad in the non-LeBron right. minutes I just, uh, in his tenure here. The idea that they maybe he wouldn't have to carry quite as much because they could be better in those minutes... 
but like if they're going to win a title, I don't think I think everybody still assumed he'd have to be an elite superstar to do it. But he just wouldn't have to carry them in the same way I, over eighty-two games. I just think the load is always heavy when you're a superstar. Period. Sure. And, and I think I think and I've been guilty of this before in terms of trying to like find different ways to make this stuff. You know, it. I guess it can be relatively easier. But at the end of the day, particularly when you're somebody that plays like LeBron and you're always going to have so much responsibility as it is, you know, offensively, even if you bring in Russ, you know, other than the minutes where LeBron is off the floor, there's a certain amount he's always going to be doing. And then on top of it, defensively, the asks were actually going to be higher. Well, and I think it, that's, and- that's, that's where I think the bigger question, I know it's one we asked in the preseason, is how much, how much are you actually gaining here? But like, if they really, I mean, if, whether they were correct or incorrect in their assumptions, if the premise was, we think we can save 10% of LeBron's energy over the course of the regular season, which isn't a ton from game to game, but over everything over a season adds up. And then he's got a little bit more in reserve for the playoffs, whatever it might be. I, I think that is a, is a very, um, it's a, it's a, it's a worthy goal. Like if that's what sure. you think you can do, that makes a difference. That is something that can, that can move the needle for the Lakers, in the playoffs, they may have been wrong in their assumptions, um, but that doesn't mean it wasn't a worthy goal. My, my other thing that I think is really fascinating with this is the timing of LeBron's sort of re-engagement um, because it it comes at a time when there is more focus on Frank Vogel's job security. There's more focus on, you know, guys are 25 games in there, 500. And, you know, we said this wasn't going to work. We said, you know, everybody said, like, could point out the problems. And a lot of this comes back to LeBron and the criticisms that he was going to receive if this doesn't work, not just as a player, but for engineering and being at the center of this trade that brought in Westbrook. So I, I do wonder how much of his re-engagement is related to kind of hearing some of the noise around it and understanding that the blowback comes back to him. It's part of the reason I don't, you know, I think it'd be embarrassing to LeBron if Vogel got fired because ultimately Vogel will be getting fired in part because the team is discombobulated for something LeBron wanted to do. I mean, I, I, I don't think those things are unrelated. They're probably not unrelated. I mean, he he has said that he's starting to feel better with with that ab strain that kept him out for a while. For and sure, to to some degree, his reengagement and you know playing with more energy and you know a lot of times just more success could just be he feels better. I mean, as far as as those, far, those could be both can be true at once. Well, they but both can be you true. are one hundred percent right. You do need to point out he is you know, at least says he's feeling certain looks like he's feeling yeah. better. I mean, he's, he is playing like a guy that is way more, uh, physically comfortable. Yes. That is, no question. that is true. I mean, I, you have regardless, to of, regardless of how much the noise around him is registering uh, to him matters to him, doesn't matter to him. I mean, the flip side of that, and I, I'm, I don't think you're necessarily wrong in terms of him being cognizant, but the flip side is LeBron also knows there's going to be noise around me no matter what. And there's going to be people detracting from me in certain respects, no matter what. Sure. And and if for whatever reason, I worst case scenario want Frank Vogel wrong, uh, gone. Best case scenario, or most generous case scenario, don't really care one way or the other. If I'm confident that the guy replacing him isn't going to do anything to hurt the team, and then eventually it just comes down to me ramping myself up no matter who the coach happens to be you know at the at the end of the day I think LeBron knows if Frank Vogel got fired but they still ended up winning a title nobody's going to care oh sure and and if they end up with Frank Vogel the whole season he keeps his job but they lose in the second round again nobody's going to take up for the idea that LeBron helped uh keep Vogel around you know what I I mean I, no, like I understand. Some, no, I understand. In some ways, the noise just becomes noise. It, LeBron has worked very hard to sort of cultivate the the reputation and the image of I am not the GM of the team that I play for. Mm. Eh, it, no, he hasn't. No, I think, he hasn't. No, I think, I, I think I, it's belied by like reality. But when he talks about it, he tries almost always to distance himself 
from the idea that he is somebody who's making. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, but I think when things are going well, LeBron is perfectly happy to let everybody know the stuff that he did. Like, for example, getting Anthony Davis. LeBron was pretty quick to let everybody know. I basically made that trade. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, but like, you know, the Lakers have been, pers- you know, that was something the Lakers have been pursuing for, like, on paper for, you know, yeah, basically since like three LeBron years. got no. there. Yeah, Anthony Davis was was a it was talked about as somebody the Lakers sure. would target long before LeBron got here. I mean, but I, I'm long, just saying, but... I, you know, but this, there, but there's a big difference between go trade. Like I helped engineer a trade for Anthony Davis that literally every person on the planet would be like, yeah, "That's a good idea. Let's go do that." And the Russell Westbrook deal. If if so the, Lake, the, the if the Lakers were nine games above five hundred, I'm pretty confident LeBron would be um, more out there with. Yeah, but, this was my. But deal. They're not, and the only way they're going to get to nine games over five hundred, so he can say, "Look, I wasn't a sure. moron," is for him to be playing right, like this. All I'm I don't saying think they're is, unrelated. all I'm saying is, I don't think he cares about the GM thing as long as things are going well. It's like anybody else when things well, aren't going well, you don't want to be attached to it. It's like anything and anybody. And and that's my point. He's trying to fix it. Um, All right, let's talk about THT because uh, good game for THT on Sunday. Hit a couple threes, which always makes things look different. Um, But the big number that I think explains why he, at least for now, is in the starting lineup uh, is on the defensive side of the ball. We'll talk about it next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by Built Bar. It's the holiday season, which means gifts, eating, and even more eating. And you know what? Go crazy, man. You earned it. But you got to offset that decadence with some degree of responsibility. You don't. You just don't want it to taste responsible what you're eating. So that makes Built Bars perfect. They are the new holiday dessert. They're low calorie. They're low carb. They're low fat. They're high protein. They're covered in 100% chocolate. They taste great. They're a great option for when you're looking to go ham during the holidays and you don't want your taste buds to know the difference. You can share some at family gatherings. It'll make things less awkward. So go to built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15. You get 15% off your first order. Again, promo code LOCK15, 15% off at built.com. Locked on Lakers also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online eighty has your uh, has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As football season continues, the march to the playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. So from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, down to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait. Take advantage of all the amazing offers available. Available for the 2021 and soon, Andy, the 2022 season. Uh, bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the games start. Um, so THT, who has been a mixed bag since those uh, first excellent games, um, returning from the thumb thing, had one of I thought his better games uh, playing on Sunday. 19 points. Three of six from three-point range makes a huge difference when he's credible from distance. Uh, he had uh, three assists and six steals. Yeah. And it's the six steals, Andy, that I think explain in part why he is in the starting lineup despite some questionable you know, spacing things and all that kind of stuff. You know, Wayne Ellington or whatever might be, you know, Malik Monk, whoever you could, you could put in there. But whether it's Anthony Davis – starting which he obviously will or a a center starting while anthony davis is gone um you know you get those spacing questions but the lakers i think value what tht does defensively and what he can do in terms of multiple people he can guard and whatever with his length and all that that i think explains why he's in the starting lineup more than anything well especially i mean if they're looking to go small one way or the other like they they need guys out there with some type of wing length, and they they just don't have a lot of guys like that on the team. I mean, it'll it'll be interesting to see what it looks like with not just Anthony Davis back, but also Trevor Reza back, and that's yep. getting closer. We we don't know the exacts yet, but he's starting to do pregame warm ups and things like that, and he's participating in practice. And Frank Vogel has made it really clear, like Ariza's availability is going to lock uh, unlock I should say a lot of different options for them especially as a team that is increasingly looking to go smaller and Frank Vogel has come to Jesus on that front and you know whether 
Yeah, well, basically, no, we, Sunday night, he really acknowledged, like, you know, we were bigger at the beginning of the season. We are not doing that as much anymore. No. And that opens I mean, up space for LeBron, and it makes it, it – he's saying what most people have acknowledged yes. all season long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's – when I was saying before about, you know, like, with LeBron, you know, best case – or worst case scenario, he got Frank Vogel fired – you know, most generous. He just doesn't care one way or the other. It could be maybe the stubbornness about playing big lineups. Yeah, I mean, that could I, be the, the latter Lakers didn't, bag. The Lakers didn't do Vogel a lot of favors in terms no. of doing some of that stuff, but like he didn't need to stick with DeAndre Jordan no. as long as he no. did. Right, but, but it, so it'll be it'll be though interesting to see what happens when they really have a full complement of guys that allow the most flexibility with going small. Like if, if THT stays in that starting lineup or if Trevor ends up starting, like, I don't know if you want to play Trevor more than like 20 ish minutes a night, I, but I, I know you, the answer but, is no, you don't. Right. But I think though, that there's an opportunity to vote for Vogel to be really creative and fluid in sort of the way he goes about using Trevor and like the, the, the places that he puts him in the game, takes him out and those different uh floor combinations and all of that could end up affecting THT as far as staying in that starting lineup. I'm also just curious to see what he looks like when AD comes back because, you know, some of not all of it, but some of the defensive necessity of THT could be alleviated a bit with AD there. But also, too, there's just the the question of whether or not he fits playing alongside the big three. I think it's the offense. I mean, defensively, I still think it, it, it makes a ton of sense. It's the offense because, you know, when he's at his worst, it's just sort of head down, you know, put the ball on the floor, get to the rim with no real plan. Um, there is a plan. He's going to use his right hand. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, look, we covered Lamar Odom for how many yeah. years? And I think I saw him, you know, on – Two hands worth of times he used yeah. his right hand. Difference so, though is THT's got a long way before. I'm just saying. It, all I'm saying is is that. Oh yeah, using a dominant hand almost exclusively <laughs> is not unique to THT. No, he didn't. He didn't around the that. NBA, like it is. It is. It's surprising. <laughs> it's always the, amazing. But there are a lot. I mean, like to quote he ain't former the only President one. Obama, "You didn't build that." Right. He ain't the only one. So no. it. It's it's the fit offensively, and look, a lot of that theoretically could be alleviated by swapping out Avery Bradley for Wayne Ellington or for Monk or whatever. But sure. you know how you best utilize some of these guys because THT would have more space to do certain things. Um, you know, obviously working with a second unit, um, some of these things can be arranged either way. Um, certain things like Austin Reeves works better with better players because, and we saw it Sunday night smart cuts makes himself available you mentioned the the behind the back you know thing that that was off of reeves cut um second half he set up at least three three pointers for the lakers by making really good cuts off lebron and then the extra pass which frank vogel loves you know we're becoming he said after sunday's game and the an extra pass team you know austin reeves is an extra pass guy but only is really most effective when he is playing with guys who can find him off those cuts and stuff like that so you know, you want him in the lineup, I think, um, if he plays like he did this weekend. It's that, we're, it's for me, it's least, it's, we're back to that, who can be a, a, a relatively consistent two-way player. Um, and Ariza, theoretically, could be something like that, but I think is very limited in how you want to use him because if he is as important as, as Vogel seems to think he is, then you need him to be healthy in the playoffs. Um, so you got to get him there. And I still think that your best, your most likely options for relatively consistent two-way players are probably Reeves and THT. Um, you know, with a little bit of maybe Monk thrown in there from time to time. Like, but like, not that those other guys aren't useful, but in terms of developing a consistent rotation that looks somewhat similar from night to night, which they haven't been able to do not just because of injuries. I, 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 I don't know where it's going to go. It's interesting after the game uh, when Frank Vogel was asked about THT's performance and you know, like whether this type of game was something that he saw potentially as a prototype game for THT and something that he could be doing more often. Vogel said yes and noted that this is why we invested in him. Mm -hmm. And it's not the first time that Frank Vogel has mentioned the idea that the Lakers 
didn't just re-sign THT this offseason, retain him. He's one of three guys from last year's team that's on this year's. They invested in him. Yep. Like they made a long-term commitment to THT despite him having, at the time, not even played a full regular season's worth of games. Like he is, He's a third-year player, but he is still incredibly inexperienced. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that that is something that makes the ups and downs and the inconsistencies and and the stuff that sometimes THT does that can be, you know, frankly, aggravating to watch. It makes it totally understandable. Like th- this is what players who are young and being given a fair amount to do. That's what happens. The flip side is, though, the Lakers are not in a position where they can just ride out those growing pains with no consequences. Like they they need THT to be a an upper end contributing member of this rotation for them to get to the finals and win a championship. Like they no, they no really question. need him to be that good. No question. Um. All right. So let, we we can carry a lot of these lineup questions and stuff through. We'll we'll get to this uh the straw poll about the NBA MVP, which is really interesting. I think both just from who's on it. And then who's not on it, particularly if you're a Laker fan. Um, so plenty more stuff to get to this week as the Lakers head out on the uh, on the road. Want to remind everyone to subscribe to Locked On Lakers on YouTube um, for all you know breaking news. The podcast gets up there you know early sometimes. All that stuff. So it's a great place to to uh, stay uh, connected to the show and to the podcast. Uh, and thank you again for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day. Make a Locked On podcast your second listen of every day, but after, of course, making us your first. We'll see everybody on, Tuesday, on Tuesday.